Today not only marks Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, but also the first observance of Muhammad Ali Day in Illinois. Known as the greatest, Ali won an Olympic boxing gold medal at 18 and then went on to win the heavyweight champion of the world three times. But he was also an activist against racism and the Vietnam War, which cost him his title. Take a look. One black one who got big on your white televisions, on your white newspapers, on your satellites, million dollar checks, and still look you in your face and tell you the truth and 100% stay with and represent my people and not leave them and sell them out because I'm rich and stay with them. That was my purpose. I'm here and I'm showing the world that you can be here and still free and stay yourself and get respect. And of course, that's a clip from the Muhammad Ali documentary that is uh, airing on PBS. Illinois activists and organizations advocated successfully for lawmakers to add Ali's January 17th birthday to the list of commemorative holidays in Illinois, which happens to coincide with the King holiday this year. Joining us now to talk more about the Muhammad Ali Commemoration Day and the greatest on what would be his 80th birthday, are Dalara Saeed, the president and co-founder of the Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition, which fought for the annual day of recognition. Donald Lasser, president of the Chicago History Museum, who for years was president and CEO of the Muhammad Ali Center in Louisville, Kentucky. And Miriam Ali, Muhammad Ali's daughter. Uh, it's a pleasure and honor to have all three of you with us. Uh, Miriam Ali, let's start with you, please. This may be a difficult question because you don't know any other way, but Give us a sense of what it was like to be the daughter of Muhammad Ali growing up in Chicago. When I was born, he was famous, so that's all I know. Um, I wouldn't change my life for anything. My father was an excellent example of a parent, despite how busy he was. Um, I've benefited from being able to glean from so many personalities and characters and people that were in his life and surrounding him, even on the streets. It allowed me to kind of have good discernment about personalities, you know. Um, my father was a great example. He's a humanitarian. He stood up for his human rights. I love to say human rights because as Muslims, we believe that all people were created equal. And the only way you're judged is by your deeds and your character by God, not by color, hair, complexion, ethnicity, anything of that nature. So he really left a great legacy. And, uh, you know, I have no complaints. <laughs> um, Donald Lasser, tell us about the importance of the time that uh, Muhammad Ali spent here in Chicago uh, and his civil rights work. Oh, well, it was a very important time for Chicagoans as well as Muhammad, as you know, and Marion um, is a true testament to this. He started his family here. Chicago meant a lot to him. As a boy growing up here, uh, Muhammad became a hero to me uh, personally, while he was not even fighting. Um, it was his reputation for uh, standing up for his beliefs, his conviction, his true conviction to his religion. And so as a young boy in Chicago and amongst me and my friends, he was a hero to us all. Dalar Saeed, how did the idea for uh, a day of commemoration come about? So the Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition with our partners um, works on equity, works on civic justice. And we were thinking of all the different issues. But when you think of the issues, you also want to think of the solutions. Uh, you don't want to just leave people with problems that you've identified. And when we think about uh, the diverse American stories that are not told, when we think about invisible communities across our nation, these were the issues we'd identified. And it seemed, hmm, what better way to start changing the narrative than to celebrating some of those stories. What better way to start celebrating those stories than with the champ, America's and the world's greatest known African-American Muslim sports athlete, civic justice uh, advocate, and just great man. Uh, Donald Lacerda, of course, today is also Martin Luther King Day, um, but he and Muhammad Ali, you know, they met a few times in their lives, but they did not always agree. Give us a sense of, of where they did agree, where they could be allies and, and where they differed. Well, they agreed on the end goal, which was equality. And so that was the most important thing. They just had two different ways of getting there. Um, and so that's one of the things that was beautiful about both men. 
while they did disagree on the methodology, the process, the strategies, they still respected one another greatly. And as you said, they, they had actually a rather long relationship. Um, Martin Luther King wrote to Muhammad when he was a very young boxer. And as everyone knows, they met in 1967 to discuss their vehement opposition to the Vietnam War. So again, outside of disagreeing on methodology, they always had the same end goal in mind. I think everyone is quite familiar with uh, Martin Luther King's methodology of, of pacifism, but Donald, give us a, a brief sense of, of what Muhammad Ali's methodology was. What did he think the process should be? Well, well again, being um, part of the nation of Islam, his belief was we should be doing things for ourselves. We don't need to be integrated. And so that was the philosophy he had at the time, that it was more important for the community to stand on its own as opposed to relying on the majority to step in and help. And so that was a di difference in philosophy. Both were peaceful, uh, but Muhammad really believed that black people, brown people in this country could do for themselves without necessarily having the aid of the government and the majority population. Miriam Ali, how did your father sort of, you know, set the standard for the way in which today's athletes speak out against what they believe to be injustice? You know, it's interesting. I think it's a double-edged sword. They did use him as an example, you know, 1968 Olympic on the Olympic platform, Tommy Smith and John Carlos took their shoes off to pr protest poverty. They wore beads and a scarf to protest lynching and, and that iconic picture of them raising their fists in the air and lowering their head during the national anthem. 22 years later, Mahmoud abdul Rauf, NBA basketball player, eventually got kicked out of the NBA for his religious belief as a Muslim. And in modern times, everyone knows the story of Colin Kaepernick. Um, you know, still banned from, from NFL for doing what he did. I, I've always felt that because of my father though, especially with team sports, athletes have been in, discouraged through new policy telling them they shouldn't be active or certain laws saying they can't stand for certain um, causes. So, you know, I think sports owners kind of owners learned from my father and actually put things in place so they wouldn't be a Muhammad Ali. But we do have examples of those who, you know, kind of trailed his path. Now, of course, most people know Muhammad Ali as the famous boxer, but he was also, as we've been discussing, known for you know his outspoken faith, even when he risked everything for it. Take a look. You stand the chance of going to jail as a result of not going into service. You well, whatever the punishment, whatever the persecution is for standing up for my religious beliefs, even if it means facing machine gun fire that day, I will face it before denouncing Elijah Muhammad and the religion of Islam. I'm ready to die. Dolores Saeed, do you hope that by having this, you know, this state holiday that more people will get a, a more complete picture of who he was as, as an activist and as a man? Absolutely. Not just who he was as an, uh, an athlete, an activist, a man, a philanthropist a father, I mean, so many different ways that each of us identify as. Um, so often it has to be one thing. You know, you look at me and you see one thing, maybe there's room for two. You look at each of us, you see one or two things. And what we wanted to share is that our identities are so unique and so deep. Um, the Muhammad Ali Day commemoration is actually part of a larger bill that, um, it, that uh, requires all public school students to learn about all communities of faiths and the contributions of those people. Something as simple as Thomas Jefferson owned a Quran in his library and that same Quran 250 years later was used by Congressman Keith Ellison as he took his oath for office shows such a more dynamic and diverse America than if we were just to say one thing about each of us. Miriam, you know, of course, both of these men, uh, Martin Luther King as well as your father, are iconic. We celebrate holidays in their name today. But at the time, they were considered to be troublemakers, to say the least, among other names that their opponents called them. Uh, give us a sense briefly about how, you know, history has changed the public perception of them. You know, I think history went in their direction. You know, 
people realized that these two men were very sincere in their conviction. And, and at the end of, end of the day, they were really advocating for all human rights. You know, a man is born wanting to be loved by community, wanted to be loved by his creator. And um, it took time for people to see how sincere they were. And, you know, people who met my dad, his persona was a little different from bragging about his fights. He treated people with such kindness. I've seen him, whether he was talking to a person of low status, a homeless person, or someone viewed as having low status, economic status, or the king of a, a country, he treated everyone the same. So I think over time, you know, I, ideologies went in their favor. Absolutely. Okay. Miriam Ali, uh, Donald Blasera, and Dolores Saeed for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.